What's going on guys? It's Terabyte Reacts here once again. Jingle bells, whatever. Merry Christmas. We are here today once more. As I told you guys, enjoy yourself with your family in the morning because I'm recording these early. And then I'm going to put them out for you, schedule them for you guys to watch these in the evening time. You can come and chill after you've got enough of your family. You can come chill with your boy. Watch a couple of Game of Thrones videos with me, okay? So, Game of Thrones, let's go. This is another theory video, and this is one is by Azura Ahai, okay? Is Jamie Lannister the real hero? The real hero of the story? Hell nah. So I still want to hear what this theory is. I don't believe that for a second. He is not the real hero of the story. There is still a lot of redemption for Jamie to go on. He cannot be the real hero of this story. There's no way the writer can't write that after all that has been going on. He just cannot be. His story is awesome and I love it. I told you he's in my top five. But real hero? No, that's a stretch. You know what I'm saying? So... Mm, uh, anti-villain maybe i don't know <laughs> you know but uh i don't know about true hero or real hero but let's jump into this hear what this guy has to say seems pretty interesting that's what theories are supposed to be right okay i'm guessing we're getting an ad here i don't know why this is Oh, that's cool and all. Hi, I'm Eric <laughs> Voss, and now that Game of Thrones Season 7 is coming, a ton of you guys have been hitting me up asking about this new theory about who will be revealed as the real hero of Westeros when the series ends. And yes, I know I'm wearing glasses, I'm having issues with contacts, also want to look smarter for this video. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to get into some potential spoilers for Season 7 of Game of Thrones, but really, these are all just theories and predictions based on stuff that has already come up on the show and in the book so far. Okay, if you've been following the show and the book closely, you're probably familiar with the prophecy of Azor Ahai, also sometimes referred to as the prince that was promised. Now, I'm going to go into the backstory on this prophecy, but if you feel like you already know it pretty well and just want to get right to my theory, you can skip to this time. So, in George R. R. Martin's universe, the prince that was promised was an ancient prophesied leader who will deliver the world from darkness. According to legend, he will be born amidst smoke and salt under a bleeding star, and he will have a song, the Song of Ice and Fire. Now, obviously, there's a lot of metaphorical language here, and a lot of people over the years have interpreted this differently. Naturally, pretty much everyone tries to exploit it for power. So one of the characters believed to be the prince that was promised was Stannis Baratheon. In the eyes of Lady Melisandre, he was actually considered the second coming of Azor Ahai. Now, Azor Ahai is an ancient, legendary hero to the followers of the Lord of Light, R'hllor. Azor Ahai wielded a fiery sword called Lightbringer, and people of this religion believe Azor Ahai will be reborn as a new person with his own fiery sword to defeat the darkness brought on by the others, the White Walkers. So really, Azor Ahai reborn and the prince that was promised are kind of terms that are just used interchangeably. And nowadays, people believe that they point to the same prophetic figure. Now, Melisandre assumed that Stannis was Azor Ahai reborn, interpreting the red comet that appeared in the sky in season two to be the bleeding star. But considering the way things ended for Stannis, that's obviously not the case. Now, there was another character who arrived, so to speak, under this bleeding star around the same time, Daenerys Targaryen. The miraculous birth of her dragons at the end of season one was a key symbolic rebirth for her character, taking place amid smoke and I guess salt? Maybe in that salty desert sand or the tears she wept for Khal Drogo. Again, guys, this is all metaphorical. But the <laughs> other popular candidate for Azor High Reborn is Jon Snow. This guy freaking resurrected from the dead with the help of Melisandre and her prayers to the Lord of Light. And really more than anyone else on the show, Jon seems to be the most heroic leader against the White Walkers. But long before these two people, many believed that the prince that was promised was Rhaegar Targaryen, including Rhaegar himself. He was known to be a singer and an amazing swordsman. And in book three, Daenerys learns that her late brother found something in a scroll and decided that he must 
must become a warrior. I'm guessing it was this prophecy. Also, in the books, in Daenerys' vision, she sees her brother holding the baby Aegon Targaryen, cryptically saying he is the prince that was promised and his is a song of ice and fire. Now, of course, that baby was horribly murdered by the mountain Gregor Clegane in the sack of King's Landing. So that wasn't the case. But we also know that Rhaegar had another baby, Jon Snow. So maybe this is more evidence that Jon is the prince that was promised. Anyway, there are also just a ton of alternate theories that Azor Ahai could be someone else, like Bran, Arya, Tyrion, Samuel Tarly. Just kidding, no one thinks it's him. But the <laughs> newest theory out there is that Azor Ahai Reborn is Jaime Lannister, the Kingslayer, the villainous, incestuous twin brother turned more redemptive, but still kind of incestuous hero. And here's why this guy could end up saving all of Westeros by the end of the series. So according to legend, Azor Ahai created his flaming sword, Lightbringer, in a three-step forging process. And again, all these details are really meant to be metaphor that we can interpret and apply to other people who have similar parallel journeys. So first, Azor Ahai forged for 30 days and 30 nights, and then he tempered the sword in water, but the sword broke. So the second time, he spent 50 days and 50 nights and tempered it by plunging it into the heart of a lion. A lion, but again, the steel shattered. And the third time, he spent 100 days and 100 nights and he called in his wife, Nissa Nissa, and drove the sword into her heart and her soul merged with the steel to create Lightbringer. And if you think about it, these three crucial steps correspond to Jamie's character arc, transitioning him from the detestable Kingslayer to the more heroic Jamie. Lannister. So one of the first big character moments for Jamie, both in the books and in the show, was right after he lost so his So he would hand. have to Remember, kill he took a Cersei. Bath with and breaks down emotionally as well as physically, revealing his side of the story that led to his famous nickname of Kingslayer. So just like when Azor Ahai tempered his first sword in water, it shattered. When Jamie goes into the water, he breaks as well. And pay close attention to how this confession scene ends. But what right? So this is Jamie's rebirth, breaking out of this Kingslayer shell to become a more morally complex hero. Okay, so another key step for Jamie's growth as a character was the breaking apart of the Lannister family structure. So throughout season four, Jamie rapidly loses his son Joffrey, followed by his father Tywin, which results in the exile of his brother Tyrion. In fact, it was Jamie's decision to defy his father and free Tyrion that led to Tyrion killing Tywin by firing an arrow directly into his heart. Of course, Tywin was the patriarch of the Lannisters, whose sigil is the lion. And as Cersei coldly told Jaime at Tywin's funeral, it was Jaime's actions that killed their daddy lion. Tyrion may be a monster, but at least he killed our father on purpose. You killed him by mistake, a stupidity. So by breaking away from this pride of lions, Jamie parallels the second step of Azor Ahai's forging, plunging the sword into the heart of the lion. And that brings us to the final step, Azor Ahai's sacrifice of his wife and companion, Nissa Nissa. And here's where things get interesting. So besides Azor Ahai and the prince that was promised, another key prophecy in Game of Thrones was the one that Cersei received as a young girl from the Wood Witch, who's Maggie the Frog in the books. So even though this doesn't happen in the show, in the book, Cersei is also told that she will die by the hand of her Volonqar, and that's a Valyrian word for younger brother. Now, Cersei has always interpreted that younger brother to be Tyrion, which is one of the reasons she's always been so suspicious of him. Remember, in season two, Tyrion threatens her with this line. The day will come when you think you're safe and happy, and your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth. And that threat has always haunted her. But now it appears that that Volonqar could be a different younger brother, her twin brother, Jamie Lannister, who was born a few minutes after her. So remember, Cersei just blew up a huge piece of King's Landing using the same jars of wildfire that the Mad King stored beneath the city. The same war crime that Jamie slew that king to prevent. So now that Cersei has become a bit of a mad queen, it's possible that Jamie might repeat history, yeah. fulfilling his destiny both as the Volonqar and Azor Ahai. Yeah, I can like I'm the only one that calls her Mad Queen. To create Lightbringer. Now, what would this fiery sword look like? So I'm so saying, yes, break down Cersei. the season seven trailer, I talked about how Jamie's new sword, Widow's Whale, was one of the twin Valyrian steel swords that Tywin melted down from the Stark sword, Ice. And yeah, maybe the moment that Jamie drives this sword into Cersei's heart, it'll burst into flames. And maybe at the same time, Brienne's sword, Oathkeeper, will also burst 
in the flames since they were forged from the same steel ice. A song of ice on fire. But I think that there's another equally awesome way this could go. Also in that season seven breakdown, I pointed out how in that shot of the large floor map in the Red Keep, Cersei is standing on the neck of Westeros. But what I didn't point out is that Jaime is standing right beside the east coast of Westeros and these narrow peninsulas are called the fingers. So this shot could be foreshadowing Jaime using his literal fingers to strangle Cersei around her neck. But then again, remember that threat from Tyrion and your joy will turn to ashes in your mouth. So it could be that Lightbringer doesn't refer to a literal sword, but Jamie's golden hand bursting into flames as he chokes Cersei, causing literal ashes to form in her mouth. So yeah, it's a pretty gruesome, but pretty epic and poetically justified way for Cersei to die, considering the masses she burned at the end of last season. And yeah, I know this sounds crazy, but when you look back, this visual has been foreshadowed throughout the series. So first in book three, right after Jamie's hand is cut off, off, there's this passage, his hand burned, and his fingers twisting in the flames, the fingers he no longer had. Also in the show, in that key moment I talked about when Jamie freed Tyrion, Jamie holds a fiery torch and it flashes in front of the camera. And sure, that one could be stretching, but there was also this pivotal moment in the first episode when Bran caught Jamie and Cersei in the act, and Jamie's hand is around Cersei's throat. So Jamie's iconic line of things I do for love could come full circle later when he now turned on Cersei. And speaking of Bran, in season four, there's an interesting scene where Bran, Mira, and Jojen Reed speculate on their journey, specifically how it would end. This isn't the end. How will we know the end? You'll know. So remember, Jojen Reed would dream visions of the future, and maybe this is Jojen's way of saying that they'll know it's the end when Azor Ahai returns to vanquish the White Walkers with his Lightbringer being a hand of fire. Also, here's a fun detail that could connect Jaime to the Lord of Light prophecy. The Valyrian words for Lord and Light, Aiskio and Onos, are weirdly similar to Aiskion and Ondos, which translate to gold hand. So it could be that over thousands of years, this prophecy just got lost in translation, and the Lord of Light's champion was always destined to be the man with the golden hand. Now, just to be clear, I still think Game of Thrones seems way more focused on Jon and Daenerys as the heroes of the story. Like, the two of them have both experienced classic heroes' journeys, highborn children in exile, traveling to the far corners of the world, coming back from death to become leaders of men. But I would argue that Jaime has experienced the most personal growth. Remember, we hated this guy in that first episode. But then, over time, he completely transformed into a hero that we kind of like. But what are your thoughts? Does Jaime being Azor Ahai Reborn sound like a satisfying conclusion for this whole series? Or does that idea take away significance from other characters? Like guys, that would mean the Prince that was promised can't be Sam. I know, hearts are breaking. But do you <laughs> think that there's any other unexpected character yeah, that you right, leave will Sam be alone. as Azor Ahai Reborn? Or do you think the show can get away with not even resolving this mystery at all? I'm curious to hear any theories that you have. Let me know down in the comments. And again, make sure to check out my season seven trailer breakdown for more predictions and missable clues about this new season. And if you like this video, please hit like and subscribe to New Rockstars. And if you really like us, you can contribute to us on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of our current patrons, especially Matthew Salvas. You can hit me up on Twitter at EAVox with any thoughts you have about Game of Thrones Season 7, or follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars for updates on our videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye. All right, let's talk about it. I mean, first question I would ask you guys, off cuff, let me get this off chess. Um, would you be happy or mad if it turns out that Jamie is Azora High? He's the prince that was promised, even though it would absolutely make no sense. <laughs> yeah, as according to how the story is going, if it turns out that this is revealed in season eight, would you be mad? Would you be mad, happy, sad? What emotions do you think you would feel? I think I would be, I would be fine with it. I'm being honest. I would be fine with it as long as they wrap up everything else very good. Can't just drop this in our lap with no explanation. And I don't think they have the time in season eight 
for an explanation like this. You get what I'm saying? You can't just have like a like a like a 30 minute dial, a, not a 30 minute dial, a 30 second scene of this happening it because everybody's gonna be like what you know especially people that don't read the books they're gonna be it's gonna be an uproar of of you know what i'm saying like you know people saying this is bullshit it doesn't fit anywhere in the story you know because this has never been in reference to jamie but even though as i said this could be something that happens in the books because the books would be more um of a, a better setup you know what i'm saying like it would be written out a lot better flesh it out a lot better you would kind of expect it more there but not in the tv series in the tv series there's a lot of theories out there that the tv series there's no way they can they can reveal all of that in season eight because it's just it would be just it would be too much would be um not enough time for them to explain it six episodes i think each episode is going to be like an hour and a half so it's going to be like a, a movie for every episode at, at they were trying to go i think somebody was saying they were trying to do two hours per episode but no no um but as for this theory on my thoughts on it like it is a possibility that jamie could be um this the the prince that was promised according to all the theories it could be it's a possibility um bringing all all the quote-unquote facts to the forefront as this guy did it is a possibility that jamie could be i understand that's what i'm saying like he would have to kill cersei would have to be that last step is nobody else he'd have to be cersei which i don't think jamie's gonna come all the way back to king's landing to do like you, you know what i'm saying like we all want to see how they wrap up the fight with the with the white walkers i believe they will do that and then they will reveal how things are going to go down in king's landing um i don't think i oh don't know man this my entire thing about this the, not this theory but the, how i think game of thrones should end or oh, i want it to end um Overall, I could give you guys many scenarios of how I think it's going to end. But overall, what I personally want to happen, right? What I personally want to happen is I don't want John on the Iron Throne. I think Daenerys should should take the throne. Um, she worked very hard for it. And I think she, in, in in no uncertain terms, she deserves it. John doesn't want it. So I'm not going to say, oh, I want John until he would be a great king. Everybody knows John would be a great king. That is not something. Um, I think that when John finds out that he's a Targaryen, um, when he finds out that he's a Targaryen, it's going to be like, you know what I'm saying? He's not going to want to be around the nearest. I tell you that much. Knowing the type of person who John is and how they look down on incest, I really don't think that um, um, Daenerys is his, is his aunt. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's his aunt. He's, that's auntie right there. So, um, it's not a cousin. As you guys said that, uh, people have educated me saying that um, cousins marry all the time in Westeros. Okay, cousins marry all the time. I know aunties and nephews ain't getting married, so that's out of the question. I don't think, I think John, because of that happening, I think John probably will not want to take a wife. Um, I, 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 it's just, it's just so many, so many, um, facets to this, you know, it, it's crazy because when I really look at the situation as in me wanting um, Daenerys to sit on the throne, she will learn how to rule because she will still have Tyrion and Varys there. Um, not so much Varys because I, th I don't think Varys is going to make it to King's Landing. I think Varys is going to, I don't know. I mean, that, that was very cryptic 
what what Miss Sande says to him is like, we will all die in this country. Does she mean Westeros or it's like we both will die in this country? Is she talking about Dragonstone or was she talking about just all of Westeros? You know what I mean? So that was a little bit confusing what she was really talking about. Um, but I do believe that Varys is one of those people that will die. One way or the other, I don't know. I don't know how Varys is going to die if he does. You know, I can't, I have no theory towards that, but at least I know uh, Tyrion is not going to die. Come on. I, I, Tyrion, there's no way Tyrion is not even going to be at the war. You know what I'm saying? He's still trying to get things prepared for Daenerys to take the throne. I don't think he's going to be anywhere close to the war with the White Walkers. So I think she should take the throne and rule how she will do that. Um, I think the overwhelming power of the dragons will convince Cersei to understand this golden company dang shit. Okay? You're bringing over more men to fight against dragons that could fly. Did you realize that um, the, uh, her hope is that the White Walkers are going to take out the other two? You know what I mean? And even when they take the other, even when they take the other two, I say, for instance, she has one left. She comes back with Drogon alone. What do you think is going to happen, man? What do you think is going to happen? It's still, there's still no match. There is still no match, you know? So according to, um, but so that's how I think things will happen. I think that Jamie, if Jamie survives the war with the white walkers, he will come back and, and, and let her know. I said, listen, we can go back. We, 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 um, I think Jamie probably going to talk to Daenerys and say, you know, I'll talk to Cersei, just like what Tyrion tried to do, you know, and try to convince her like, there's no win in this, man. I've just seen these guys fight. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy. I don't know what Euron is up to. Euron might come back. You know, Euron is probably going to come back with the with the gold with the golden company or whatever they want to call themselves. And to, he went to go pick them up at Bravos, right? So they're gonna come over a bunch of cell swords or whatever. Uh, unless they got dragons, I don't see what they're coming over to do. Regardless of how much how many of them they are, unless Daenerys coming back with only dragons and nobody and all the Unsullied are dead, all the 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 um. The Dothraki are dead. Like, I don't see how they're going to win this war. Uh, how Cersei would win. You get what I'm saying? Like, did, I just don't see it. It's not that I would not. It would be a surprise. It was. It would be more of like how. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to, to honestly think about it to see how she could possibly win when they come back. You know what I mean? If she's going to fight. If she won't just, you know, dip. You know? So, I don't know. That's just my theory on on a, on the whole thing of how I th want things to end up. I want Sansa to end up being Lady of 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 Winterfell, um, and rule alongside John. She would be Lady. He would be King. Whatever, you know. Or I mean, he bent the knee, so he's gonna be Lord and Warden of the, Warden of the North. So, if the nearest takes the, the throne, because he already bent the knee, so. Yeah. Sansa being lady, if Arya survives, then, you know, Arya could probably, I think, in my opinion, I think Arya should go and, and become, oh my God, now that I'm thinking about this, Arya should become Lord Commander of the King, of the Queen's Guard. That would be so dope, bro. That would be so dope to see Arya as the Lord Commander of the Queen of Daenerys's Queen's Guard, that would be so dope, so awesome to see her being the Lord Commander over there. It'd be that would be so cool. Um, um, yeah, that would be so cool if she became that alongside Brienne in the Queen's Guard. But I think, I think, um, I think Brienne should stay with. I think Brienne should stay with, with Sansa. I think that would be best for her. I think she should stay with Sansa. Um, 
I don't know if she would want to serve Daenerys. That's the thing. Um, cause she doesn't really have to worry about Arya anymore. You get what I'm, you, you get what I mean? Like she doesn't have to worry about Arya, but she would still have to worry about Sansa because Sansa, you know, she's sworn to protect both of them, but she doesn't really have to worry about Arya because Arya can protect herself. So she, I think she should stay with Sansa. Um, so for those characters, um, who did I not talk about? I think I talked about everybody that, you know, that you guys know about. Bran, um, I think Bran, Bran will cease to exist after the war. I don't think he, I, I, I think once he's done what he's supposed to do, there's nothing left for him to do. So I think he will like just phase out into, into nothingness or something like that. That would be so cool if he just you know he just died of natural causes or something or like my duty is done he just floats away into the air but it's wishful thinking i guess <laughs> but that would be cool but yeah so i'm just talking about just the main characters here of what i expect for them sam i think sam should go be um the maester even though i'm not sure i mean you guys got to understand, because a lot of people is like, Sam is not going to really care that Daenerys burnt his dad and his brother alive. And I think Sam will care. You guys got to understand, no matter how much you hate family, no matter how much they do stuff to you, you don't want anybody to hurt your family. Period. Point blank. And I know you guys respectively will understand what I'm saying this in, in, in real life. Okay. You know that for a fact. In Game of Thrones, maybe it's a little bit different or maybe you guys feel like Sam is not that type of person, but Sam is that caring type of person. He's not like, like say, your, your, your Cersei or your Jamie. you know what I mean? Whereas in, you know what I'm saying, they care so much about family. I mean, they care so much about family. What am I talking about? They care too much about family, to be honest. They'll burn, Cersei will burn the whole world for her kids. You know what I mean? So, but talking about if, 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 um, if Sam should, if Sam should actually hate Daenerys because of this, I think he will have some reservations about serving her as Grand Maester in King's Landing. If this happens, okay. If 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 things happen, if her vi if if Daenerys' vision comes tr true, which is the 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 destruction of um the Red Keep and all that stuff, where she walked through with that vision and stuff, and a dragon flying over King's Landing and stuff like that. If if all of that comes to pass, right? Which a dragon flying over King's Landing could have been when they had the big meeting. So, it, it, you know what I'm saying? It just didn't show the scene. So, it could be something different. It could be something um, way off the cuff. But I think that's what he should do. You get what I'm saying? I think he should go to King's Landing and be Grand Maester and be on the, on, the, um, on the Queen's Council, whatever they want to call it, right? On the small council with the other, with the other lords and, and whatever. Um... Um, so, um, in, in, in other things to, to talk about it, you know, in, in other ways, I think that, um, what's his name? I think when Daenerys, uh, from her perspective, I think when she, if she finds out that John is a Targaryen, um, and he's the rightful heir to the throne, I don't know what to predict there. I don't know if she will, how she will feel about it. I don't know if she would be like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how Daenerys is going to feel about that because Daenerys is in love with Jon. She's in love with him. She's in love with him. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Bran decides not to tell Jon that he's a Targaryen and they just, they become king and queen. Who the hell knows? I, I don't know. How can they become king and queen anyways? It's just be... If, if if she marries him, does he become king and rule? How does it work? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because when queens marry, does 
are the men the bitches? I, <laughs> I don't know how it goes when queens marry. Because I think when queens, when queens marry, um, I'm not sure. I don't remember exactly. I'm probably going to have to look that up. But in monarchies, I don't know what happens if, if a queen marries. Does the king take over? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Probably not. Probably not. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's the reason why Queen Elizabeth never got married because um, because if she got married again, then she wouldn't be in quote-unquote charge, right? I think that's how it goes. I'm not sure. I'm not 100%. I'm just guessing here if she would want, if, if that's the case, then if she would want to give it up to John by marrying him or, or probably not. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just out here just trying to reason with you guys. But anyways, man, that's just my thoughts and thing on the things that are going through my head. You guys can tell me what you think in the comment section, of course, okay? This is your first time watching me, man. 30 minutes ain't nothing over here, okay? So subscribe to the channel. We'll talk later. Leave a like on this at, on this video. And also, of course, leave a comment in the comment section. We get busy on this Game of Thrones stuff, okay? So... Talk to you guys later. Merry Christmas as always. Hope you guys get a chance to watch this entire thing. I don't know why I made it 30 minutes, 31 going on 32. But anyways, man, thank you guys for watching as always. You know who it is. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts and peace.